after watching dozens of videos of people applying liquid metal and then watching dozens more videos of repair guys cleaning the mess and trying to repair the damage caused by liquid metal I actually noticed five things people do wrong all the time First, they squeeze it out of the syringe right on the chip which often ends with the syringe just nutting the liquid metal over the laptop's motherboard and after extremely tedious and time-consuming process of cleaning you are just sitting there thinking if you cleaned all of it or if you missed a spot and your laptop is dead the moment you boot it second even if you manage to squeeze out a very small drop that small drop is probably still too much you will try to spread it evenly all over the chip but you will end up with actual puddles of conductive liquid inside of your laptop and you know what happens with puddles they splash the moment you squeeze them right now you see a very small ball of liquid metal it was enough for CPU die, GPU die, CPU heatsink and GPU heatsink and still there was some left so I had to suck it up back into the syringe and people put even more than that on a single surface then they try their hard to spread it repeat the process three more times and leave it be no wonder it leaks third people do not coat those tiny little capacitors around the chip as a real example i accidentally smudged a spot around the cpu die there are no smds there of course but in the case of gpu that area would be exact area where all those tiny things are located coating not only protects them from accidental leakage in everyday usage but also protects them during application process you need to coat properly everything that can be shorted just not to take any chances and last but not the least is that some people actually use liquid metal with aluminum heat sinks even though the package clearly says that you do not use liquid metal with aluminum heat sinks you just don't so my main thought was if there's nothing to leak nothing will leak if there's nothing to splash nothing will splash and with that idea in mind let's talk some theory as we know surface tension of liquid metal is pretty high it means that if we apply a very thin layer as thin as even possible to some flat surface let's say cpu die liquid metal is just not going anywhere then if we apply a thin layer to the heatsink as well it is also not going anywhere thanks to the surface tension and after that we place heatsink right where it belongs two thin layers of liquid metal embrace each other and happily bond together which means that they absolutely not going anywhere no matter how bad you shake your computer so basically we apply thinnest layer of liquid metal possible on both surfaces surface tension does its job they bond each other and everybody's happy and now knowing all that theory let's get to practice the first thing to do after you open the laptop is disconnecting the damn battery only then you can proceed to removing cooling system after doing it scratch out some guidelines right on the heatsink using old thermal paste as a guide then you clean the thermal paste for this you can use toilet paper paper towels isopropyl alcohol cotton swabs and for capacitors with the help of toothbrush you can also use some special spray which dissolves stuff but do not forget to let it dry completely before even thinking of connecting the battery back try to make everything as clean as possible because we are going to seal them those little capacitors but not only them also everything that is conductive resembles 
copper or aluminum and not the motherboard itself. Basically, everything shiny. Some people use nail polish for that purpose, but I can't be 100% sure that it will resist 100 degrees Celsius on a regular basis and just won't melt at some point in time, messing everything up. So you better spend another $5 for a special acrylic coating, which was designed for situations like this. Extra 5 bucks for some peace of mind. Sounds like a good deal, if you ask me. Anyway, you apply one layer, wait for it to dry, apply one more, just in case. And after doing this, you almost ready to apply liquid metal. Almost is because there's still one very important thing to do. Before applying anything, put cooling system back. Check if all holes align. Check all fan connectors and other cables if they connect properly, as they were. Remember how it should be. Actually practice couple of times assembling and disassembling cooling system. It is very important step. You do not want to put liquid metal, put cooling system back and then find out that some stupid cable stuck under a motherboard and to get it out of there, cooling system needs to be removed again. It will just mess up your work. Especially if your laptop is using thermal putty instead of conventional thermal pads which is also the thing to consider. But we will talk about this a little bit later in the video. So, the moment you're confident enough that you will be able to put cooling system back without missing anything, clean everything with isopropyl alcohol one more time and be ready to apply liquid metal. For that, you need some clean plastic card placed far away from your laptop as possible. Squeeze a little tiny drop of liquid metal on it. Then take a lint-free swab. There are a couple of them, comes in the packaging. Poke liquid metal with it until some of it sticks and start spreading all over the CPU die. Little by little, take your time. Make the layer as thin as possible. But make sure you cover the surface entirely. Don't miss any spots which is easy, considering that the dye and liquid metal are both shiny and look very similar. Do not leave any puddles. Repeat the process three more times for the CPU part of the heatsink, for the GPU dye and for the GPU part of the heatsink. Then carefully put the cooling system back and assemble the laptop. In the long term, I can't say anything for sure, but this is what can happen in theory. Copper, though very slowly, but seems to be reacting with liquid metal. Or, if we be precise, they create an alloy together. It means that particles of liquid metal migrate into the surface of copper at some depth. Which also means that, again in theory, all liquid metal can be absorbed by the copper sooner or later, which therefore means that there may be a point in time when your computer starts to overheat instantly, because there is no contact between the chip and heatsink anymore. All liquid metal gets sucked into the copper. When the liquid metal is reapplied, the process may repeat itself or may not because copper can suck in liquid metal only to some extent, which means that there's also a point in time when liquid metal doesn't migrate into the copper anymore and stays exactly where it was. So there's a proper contact between the heatsink and the dye, which will last. I can only guess exact time frames of this process, if they even ever take place in the laptop's lifetime. There is a process called nickel plating. You place a thin layer of nickel on a surface of a copper heatsink, with which they create an alloy, copper nickel. And then the nickel plated part contacts with liquid metal. Liquid metal reacts with nickel 
a lot more slower than with copper so it stays exactly where you put it for longer but i'm not <laughs> building an entire chemistry lab just to nickel plate one single heatsink of a single laptop it's just already too much trouble as it is if copper and liquid metal forming an alloy is really the thing well let them do it i'll just monitor temps and performance and add some more liquid metal if needed but for now my main goal is to properly and safely apply liquid metal check if vrms and other components which need cooling are cooled properly close the laptop and leave it be not messing with it anymore for as long as possible you do something properly only once and forget about it for a long long time and now knowing the fact that we may need to disassemble laptop again in the near future let's get back to those liquid thermal pads which are used instead of regular thermal pads in many new laptops when you disassemble cooling system contact is worse than it was before everything is messed up at some degree some of thermal pastes got squeezed over the edges of the chip and there may be some spots without thermal paste at all it may seriously affect how effectively heat being transferred to the heatsink you may think that it is not that important but as a fact cooling vrms properly is even more important than cooling cpu or gpu because vrm overheating is one of the main reasons why modern laptops die i'll put a link in the description with the video on this topic but you better do your own research as well i'm trying to say that proper contact between vrms and other components with heatsink is crucial if you want your laptop to be in a perfectly working condition as long as possible otherwise if vrms are not cooled properly and constantly overheat they will just burn out one day taking cpu and gp with them of course you can just scrape off all thermal putty and replace it with a new one but that's another ten dollars and if or when you need to reapply liquid metal it's another 10 bucks on thermal putty i don't know about that and i also don't know what is the best way to preserve all thermal putty but scraping off everything piling on a plate and then trying to reapply it as i did is definitely the worst if you don't do anything stupid disconnect the battery coat everything conductive around cpu and gpu and take care of vrms then your laptop is probably going to be fine and you can be sure that you played as safe as possible and if you want to see some actual numbers there are two more videos coming where i am replacing thermal paste with liquid metal and 15 inch 2015 macbook pro and uh, msi creator 15 oled which is practically msi g66 with oled display also as i already mentioned i will monitor performance and if i will not forget make a couple more videos on this topic where i will try to answer the question if performance changes over time and uh, a liquid metal needs to be reapplied after a while so that's probably it thank you for watching